Hi everyone, welcome to this episode. Today I'm joined by Cara Sayer. Cara is an inventor and the chief sleep officer at Snoo Shade. Snoo Shade saved my life when my little ones were small. It was so great to be able to cover over the pushchair and know that they could get a good night's sleep um, or even day sleep when we're traveling. Cara, a huge welcome to the Sleep Nanny podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. I mean, I haven't done this before, so this is all a, a whole new thing. Oh, it's so exciting. I love having these conversations, um, especially with women like you, where you, you're an inventor, you're a mum. And I mean, you you tell us your story, but I, I totally understand how you and many of us as mums come up with visions and solutions to problems that we see as parents, right? Um, oh, 100%, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think they say necessity is the mother of invention. And I'd say mm. there's a lot of mothers who see the necessity inventing. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, yeah, so um, so my daughter is now a staggering 16 years old, just about mm. to do her first GCSE today. Um, so this is quite a long time ago, but back in, uh, she was born in 2007, and I came up with the sort of concept idea of it in about, must have been about 2008. Yeah. And and it was really simple. Um, I, I I was uh, so I had a very difficult pregnancy. Um, I had, had a she was an IVF baby, um, very, very precious. And um, <clears throat> not that everyone's baby isn't precious, but you know what yeah. I mean. And um, I was in a wheelchair. I had um, a case of SPD, which is symphysis pubis dysfunction, which meant I had to learn how to walk again after I had Holly. So I was up and around like well, as soon as I could be. It took me about four or five months to learn how to walk again. And then I was out there with the pram pushing around. And, you know, I used to go, I was so excited to be walking again that I'd be like off to Sainsbury's going buy my breakfast, off to Sainsbury's buy my lunch. And then I'd be walking around. The weather was, you know, when the weather was nice, et cetera. And I did what probably we all do, which is, you know, have a blanket over the pram, a muslin, even my coats, jackets when it was really cold. And I'd be walking around, <clears throat> excuse me, with, um, you know, freezing. And Holly would be sort of, you know, under a cardigan or whatever else it was under over the thing. And I was just thinking... You know, this is this is like there must be something else. And then I was sitting with a group of friends and we were having lunch together and everyone was doing the same thing. They're like they were all the babies were sort of they're all in strollers and um, everyone was like feeding the baby. And then it was like, right. And then they're covering up with something, something, something. And I thought this is ridiculous. And I just thought there must be something like a blackout blind for, for buggies. Right. That was yeah. literally my my thought. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I don't know why, if I'm really honest, it's really funny. People sort of say, what made you do it? I think I'm just a problem solver. I, I yeah. mean, if you give me a problem, I love it. So me even too. now I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah. Problem? No problem. You know, I'll fix it. <laughs> and um, I just got it in my head that you know this was something that I needed. And I'm I'm also a I, I like helping people as well. So I'm like one. I was like, well, if it helps me, I'm sure it'll help other people as well. And I spoke to lots of people and friends, and I, you know, even things online and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, it's a good idea. So um, I went off first of all and bought some fabric, which I now know to be completely inappropriate, and made up my first kind of um, prototype, which I've still got somewhere. Um, and that was made of like black cotton, which wouldn't have been good at all, but it, it was the initial sort of concept. Um, and then I um, started looking into like other products that were out there and there were things like mosquito nets and UV nets and this and that and the other. And I was sort of looking at what they were made of. And so I found a manufacturer um, because I realized that me and my sewing skills were not going to get very far because they're fairly useless um, <laughs> and um, started talking about how to design it. And, and my manufacturer is I've been working with her for the last 14 years and she's a mum of four. She completely got the concept. She was like, she's been one of my biggest fans. And um, so we start, I started sort of developing, developing um, and came up with basically the first version of sort of snoo shade. Um, and then, and then actually I went through IVF again and that, that wasn't so great. And then um, I, I was about to go through another round um, and there was a baby product show um, in uh, London um, and they had an innovation area. And so I thought, well, you know what? If this is an idea that's kind of got legs, it'd be quite useful to go and sort of speak to the people at the, the fa you know, the coal face, you know, the ones who are like retailers who are selling to customers and see whether they think this idea has got legs or not. And then if it hasn't, I'll just stop. So anyway, I um, went to this show with my mum. It was really funny because, I mean, I'm actually, my background is actually an ex-event organiser. And so, you know, I, it was, my stand was so shonky, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was like bits of paper stuck up. And we had my pram that I used to use with Holly, which had bird poo on the hood. And my mum's there wiping it off with a baby wife and all this sort of stuff. Um, 
And uh, while I was at the show is when I decided to add some extra straps uh, because I was like, oh, I think it'll fit better. And so uh, while I'm there, I'm like, oh, no, no, very high quality product, you know, all this sort of stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then a strap pings off. I was like, oh, except for that one. <laughs> so um, anyway, went there and, and basically 99 percent of people loved it. They thought it was a great idea. Um, the only person who didn't like it was a, was a man who said that he said, well, my children never had any problem sleeping in the pushchair and then walked off. And I was like, yeah, OK, mate, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, anyway, but so I had my first order placed by Jojo Mamon Bebe, which was I was like, oh, my God. Um, yeah. And I sort of said, yes. I mean, this is the thing. Sometimes you just got to say yes to stuff. I mean, I hadn't yeah. even got all I had was a prototype. And I said yes to delivering in February of like the next year in 2010. I just said yes. Um, and then once I'd done that and then I spoke and then John Lewis and Mothercare and various other people all came on board. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I launched in March, 2010 with the original. Um, yeah. and that was the first product, which is, uh, now very much geared towards newborns to basically any baby that's in a pram or carry cot. So it acts as a canopy, um, yeah. you know, because the NHS and every worldwide states that babies under six months must also be kept out of direct sunlight completely for the first six months, not just like give them a bit of shade. And mm. umbrellas are just useless. I mean, yep. you know, they just don't don't give the level. They don't they don't help with UV reflection and various other things. And they also don't help with sleep mm. because I mean, one, one of the other reasons I invented snoo shade is I had a sunshade, mm. but the problem was is that Holly could see out of it all the time. And yeah. I was like, well, that's great, except when I wanted to go to sleep, you know? Yeah. So um, snoo shade does both. It's got the, the sleep, the sun. It also does wind, chill, bugs you know, all, all sorts. So amazing. How did you protect it? So I, I'd be thinking like you, you showed up to this trade show, you had your prototype there. Um, and getting orders from some big names quite quickly is amazing. I'd be scared that they would be like, Oh, that's good. And go and go and, you know, make it. <laughs> well, well, it has happened, obviously. And I mean, it has happened in the past. Um, I, I had initially registered design um, and you, I couldn't patent it because it was not and sort of, I mean, now retrospectively, I probably could have patented it, but now it's 10 years on anyway and patents only last 10 years. So um, whereas registered design can last for up to 35 years. So it gives mm. you that much more protection. Having said that, I lost my UK registered design uh, because when I got divorced, um, the um, people in my new house decided not to forward on some mail. And um, oh, no. that was very annoying. Having said that, um, Aldi actually copied me back in 2019. Um, and it was my unregistered design rights that because you actually have unregistered design rights that last yeah. for a while as well. So that's what kind of protected me in that front. But yeah. it's really quite funny because a lot of the pram manufacturers are try, try to copy it. But yeah. the problem is they don't they never copy it like the way that I do it. And they always try and do it on the cheap. Mm. Um, and, um, they also don't go that I know they don't do the safety testing and they don't think about the safety in the same way that I do. So mm. I think, I think because Holly, as I said, was an IVF baby. So, and yeah. also she had a febrile convulsion when she was about nine months old. And so I was very paranoid about temperature and things like that. So, yeah. um, I, I mean, what happened was when I originally designed snoo shade, I, it was actually white, um, and then I realized it probably wouldn't be dark enough for sleep. And then I was worried because it was black. And I was like, but black attracts heat. You know, oh, my God, like the baby's going to die in there sort of thing. Um, anyway, fortunately for the world, uh, one of my friends is a physics teacher. And it just so happens that one of her husband's friends was a um, he's actually the, he's the, le the UK's leading firm of physicist who's got an MBE for his work. And he took time out of his day for me to go and speak to him. And I said to him, look, this is what I'm thinking of doing. This is what it's made of. This is the color, blah, blah, blah. What are the issues? Because I was never very good at physics at school, if I'm honest. And he was like, no, it's absolutely fine color. It, like if it was a black brick, it would sit and absorb and keep the heat. But it's a it's a polyester mesh, which mm. means it will it will heat up in terms of on the top layer. But that's actually a good thing. Because then what that does, it pulls up convection and hot. And if there is any cooler air, it will pull it through. And I was like, oh, that's mm, good. Didn't know, yeah. didn't know about that, you know. Um, and um, so what we generally find is uh, people often worry about the heat because of it being black. And what I generally have found, and I've literally stood. So I've done a couple of, you can't test scientifically for it in terms of there's no standards against which you mm. can measure it. So I have tested against every scientific standard I can. So I have tested for air permeability, which is the ability of air to move through a fabric. Breathability is a much misused word because that mm. actually refers to moisture wicking. It's got nothing to do with airflow. Mm. Um, and then I've also done some, um, I say unofficial, but with like some of the world's leading um, testing laboratories. So I did one for CO2 rebreathing, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously a contributing factor to SIDS. 
Um, and I also did direct suffocation. So even if you literally lay it on the fabric on a baby's face, it won't die because mm. it can't, it can breathe. Um, and then, uh, well, so, I mean, yeah. And then also all my products are just in the first instance designed to be safe enough for a newborn to interact with directly like a newborn toy. So right. that means, for example, a little bit more fiddly, which is, you know, like I have shorter straps, I have like eight sets or six sets of straps. Um, and that's because shorter is let is not an entrapment or a strangulation risk. All the zips are like super, super strong and, um, you know, basically couldn't be pulled off by a small child. Mm -hmm. um, my the poppers I use are the only baby safe certified poppers in the world. Um, so I just I just go that extra yeah. mile yeah. when it comes to safety. And I have to be honest and say I don't I can genuinely say hand on heart. I don't think there's any other product in the, in in that industry that in the in the in, you know, mm. category uh, mm. that goes to the lengths that I do. And um, and then and then that's why I sleep at night, frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite. Yeah, and and that's you know, that's your brand reputation as well. And people know well, that that's it's what personal. you do. And For me, it it's is. all personal. Yeah. It's, it's got. I mean, yes, I'd be it'd be dreadful for the brand. I'd probably close the business down if something happened. But, you know, but if I'm really honest, forget all that. It's just I couldn't live with myself. And, mm. um, you know, and now 14 years on, I've been selling in, you know, Australia mm. since 2010, New Zealand mm. for I've got to know some, a similar sort of time, um, you know, UAE, um, Africa. You know, I know yeah. I know the product works and yeah. I mean, I've done some unofficial tests, which is, for example, I've got an office in my back garden, which is actually made of metal and glass. And I actually shut all the windows on it, which was potentially dangerous for my computer. Um, and um, so I took it out um, and basically put a pram in there with a snoo shade on and digital thermometers. And basically the temperature was actually, it was a fraction cooler inside. I don't know why, but it was, you know, my, my, my the claim I make is it won't, it can't change the temperature. It can't, it can't trap heat. So mm -hmm. it will always be the same temperature inside as it is outside. But when it is super hot, that is when you have to be really careful because your baby will burn and skin cancer is a real danger. Yeah. And we are, you know, as a nation, we are seeing more and more cases of skin cancer. And my concern is sometimes there's been a lot of um, social media sharing of stories that frankly I don't find very helpful, which is about, you know, like, well, if you cover your pram with a muslin or something, your baby's going to die. And, um, and the way that they actually, um, uh, test it is by putting the thermometer usually in the seat of the pram which is actually the pram is heating up it's metal it's thick impermeable fabric mm. you know and then also the other thing i'm not that keen on is you know the prams at, in modern days we have a lot of very deep hoods mm -hmm. now those hoods are very thick impermeable waterproof fabric mm -hmm. brilliant for winter yeah. right but not so good when i see parents walking around with those hoods pulled all the way down when it's hot because mm. the air cannot go anywhere and i've mm. tested that myself as well and the place where it heats up is in the hood um so I, we always say push the hood halfway back to re and then let snoo shade do its thing in terms yeah. of the air permeability and let that do the sun protection and then baby can sleep and you know as a general rule it is usually cooler under the shade but if you think about it it makes sense because Mm. One of the biggest contributors to that sort of thing is UV burn. Mm. Um, and you're taking away all the UV. So if you think about it, put your hand out into blazing sun. Ow, it burns. Put it in the shade. It doesn't. So mm. it feels cooler. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, that side of things has been a, a big learning curve. I mean, obviously, I actually invented it for sleep. That was that was why I invented it. But all the rest of it has, has kind come, of come yeah, further down yeah. the line. And that's what I mean. People know that about your you and your brand, which is why they won't look at, you know, cheap, alternatives or copycats that just don't have that don't go that extra mile and haven't thought of those things um no, I mean it makes my products for me I I make yeah. a lot le less profit basically yeah. if I'm really honest yeah um, I can imagine. and my costs and my costs have gone up and up and up yeah. um over the last 14 years and I still try and maintain the same costs as when I launched um, which is tough. Um, but at the same time, I have more volume. So, you know, the yeah. more I sell, the easier it is. But, yeah. um, you know, the, the problem that, you know, I, I won't compromise. That's the thing, you know, yeah. that there's just no, I would, I would actually just close the business down. If I couldn't do it in a, in a way that worked in a yeah. safe way, I just wouldn't do it. No, because it's about the bigger picture. And it's that's a bigger what I picture. Yeah. Life's too short. I can, go, yeah. I can go and do something else, you know. Yeah, if I yeah, to. yeah. Totally, totally. And so Snoo Shade has evolved, hasn't it, over the years from the push chair, the pram cover for sleep, which yeah. we know that benefits sleep. I mean, in, initially for me, I was like, brilliant, something that gets rid of that stimulating the light, yeah. the distraction, and also helps to. Um, 
helps helps with the melatonin production helps yeah. to send signals to a baby that oh it's sleepy time you know rather than broad well, it also becomes a sleep trigger i mean i, mm. I experienced this myself with holly which is um as she got older she actually asked for her snoo shade and her dummy you know so she would she'd want them both because yeah. it would she knew that if she was tired and um and it was quite fun i think for her as well because she was in the push chair so she wasn't at home it wasn't boring going in the cot yeah and um but you know some she would actually ask for it and yeah. um the one product i actually genuinely wish i'd invented earlier for me was the travel cot version and then mm. the cot and then the cot bed because we used to go and stay at my brother's house and he very generously always used to give us his bedroom which was the biggest bedroom so we could get the travel cot in um but unfortunately it was also in the loft with the velux windows and no blinds so Holly would be awake with the call of the birds and um, we were just sort of sitting there tearing our hair out. And then it was when I was in America, actually, I got the idea because in America they use the travel cots very differently, actually, to how we do. We tend to just use it for sleep and they use it more as a play pen, sleep yeah. pen, you know. And someone said, oh, it'd be brilliant to do one for, the, for that. And I was like, well, that's a really good idea, actually, you know, having thought yeah. back to the times I've struggled when I've stayed with friends who haven't heard of, win you know, curtains. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, you stay you either, I mean, a lot of people use them for when they rent because, for example, you can't put things up. Um, yeah. And also some windows are just really hard to black out. And mm. Holly was always a blackout nursery baby, you know, yeah. and I wanted that same experience whether we're in the house or out of oh, the yeah. house. You know? Camping as well, I bet. Like Camping is really popular, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was my, a big problem for me when um, they were little. I mean, I, I personally, I can't stand camping, um, but the family like it. And we did a few trips and um, I just remember, I think it was when I was pregnant with my second, she was in a breech position. I had this head oh. under my ribs. I had um, my eldest who was only, he was, well, he was 21 months when she was born. So he was only, you know, little. And that was it. He was awake. Two, that would have been fun. Two under two. Yeah. He was awake as soon as the sun came up at 4 a.m. And um, at that time of year, we're in a tent. I've got this other baby like in my, yeah. I just went this one night. I went, I'm not doing, I'm like, I'm check, me in, check me into the hotel <laughs> over there. I'm not doing this. Um, and okay, now you can get blackout tents and things and there are sort of more evolutions, but we would take a, a travel cot to take yeah. him camping. Well, no, lots and, of parents do. And lots of parents use the travel cot snoo shade because, yeah. you know, it's, and also the good thing is it's not too big. It's it's very compact and it just plops over the travel cot and, yeah. you know, and even children who are older like it. I mean, in fact, my daughter, she used to like, um, she used to get into the one that I had a tester that was on a cot in the spare room for ages. She just used to get into it, want to get into it and play in it as a den. Yeah. You know, they do, great. don't they? They love that. So I think they like that sense of being safe and snug and tucked away. They, you know, we would take um, holidays and mine had a double, oh, used to be the city jogger. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Thing. I've got a double version. Yeah. With the great big hoods, as you describe, yeah. that comes over. Yeah. And um, it would be the thing after lunch that they would both go in there. You could lay it back flat. We'd do yeah. a few laps around and they'd off, they'd go to sleep. Um, and, it, you know, we'd then park in the shade, park them up in the shade somewhere and get a little bit of quiet time yeah, with our books. Bit, yeah, nights, it's great, actually. I get a lot of people using it for date nights, which I love um, because I think it's yeah. so important, you know, when you've got a small, you know, you've got small children, yeah. it's important to be able to have that space and it's nights. very difficult. And so actually yeah. being able to go out for a meal together and not worry about baby because they're oh. there with you and yeah. there's, you know, and it is quite funny as well because people often say, oh, you know, is it soundproof? I'm like, it's not soundproof, but it's really weird because I don't think that babies are disturbed by sound in any way, the, the way they are visually. So yeah, no, I think right. it's something like it takes five seconds for a child, a baby's eyes to engage and then you've lost them and they've come out of REM, et cetera. And um, it's quite, um, it's quite funny because I've had people using it at weddings, festivals, yeah. you know, marathons, all sorts of really, yeah. really noisy environments. I mean, people send me videos. It's really funny. Like their baby is sitting sleeping there and there's a lawnmower going on in the yeah. background and the baby is just happily sleeping it's away. And noise. I love it because, yeah. Um, you know, that's that's what it's all about. It's about having a real life, but also yeah. everyone getting the sleep that they need. And I'm a sleep monster. I If I don't get the sleep I need, I'm hideous. So, mm, mm. you know, I mean, it's one of the things I, I didn't understand about as well is that the whole levels of the cortisol and the fact they need the sleep in order to reduce the cortisol in the bloodstream because having when you travel you get jet lag and you know when by the end of the day you've got a jet lag baby and I remember I had a few friends of mine when Holly was young and they're all like oh no no we'll just tire them out you know and I'm like oh my god like if I did that Holly would go mental yeah and she wouldn't sleep and I and never paid really the price. why yeah mm. yeah yeah you're right and even in yeah so yeah kind of coming back to holidays and picturing that and you said about date nights I also remember snoo shade 
over the top of our, our push chairs um, and we would get them ready for bed. So do the bedtime routine in the hotel room. Um, have the bath, the get them snug. Yeah, they'd go in there. They'd know that they were going in there. They'd have their story in there, snuggle them in. And they'd love to bring oh, that yeah. shade over. They'd love yeah. to snuggle in. And then we would push them out. By the time they're, you know, they're fast asleep, we, yeah. park, we park them up in the restaurant. Yeah, and, and they're over there. Like with them. We're, you know, we're having a dinner. We're having a nice time. We could check over there, see that they're okay. But what I love is it... Um, especially with the, the darkness, the black of yeah. that, is it does help to then reduce um, that stimulation yeah. in a big way. Because well, I do it's, say I it's totally a bore babies to sleep because, mm. you know, I mean, it blocks 94% of light um, mm. and that's been signed to all the, so I do one that's like silver and black and one that's black, black double layer. And actually that doesn't make any odds on light uh, disruption. So it mm. blocks 94% of light. Um, and um and i think that and then but i think also what it does is it just you can still see movements and things yeah. like that behind it but you can't make out anything tangible to grab onto mm. and i think when baby is waking up and stirring and they do and they stir constantly yeah. and then you know and their eyes sometimes open and close again if you see babies sleepy it's always so fascinating yeah. and they're quite you know often quite um physical you know yeah and um and the great thing is you know literally they just don't see anything and they don't see mummy or daddy looking in on them or looking checking on them and all the rest of it and that's why i always have the sneak peek zip because that yeah. for me was really important to be able to look in and see and make sure without yeah. bringing like you know because the old thing with a blanket or a muslin or whatever would be like you'd pull the whole thing up and then they'd be like hi and you'd be like oh, yeah God. <laughs> that's it now they're expecting you to get them out and play exactly and <laughs> yeah um i wish the I think so 2010 um, was when my oldest was born and we took him to the Caribbean. He was 10 weeks old. Wow. And which now I think, wow, we were crazy. But at the time, no, it seemed know. like a brilliant idea. Movies. It's brilliant, actually. The, when they're really that small, I think it, I always say to people, travel. It's, because they're actually so much easier than yeah. like a toddler or older where you're actually having to entertain them. You yeah. Know? Well, he slept the whole 10 hour flight like in a sling attached to me. Yeah. I even went to the bathroom with him on there. <laughs> like he, he slept the whole way there. He slept the whole way back. So, but not so much when we were there. And I think I had this vision that he would like, oh, it'll be warm and he'll just yeah. sleep in like he does at home in normal, you know, nap times, which is quite a lot at that age. Um, and it was the first holiday with a baby. And so mm. not being able to lie on a sun lounger and read a book. Yes. Um, as much as I'd wanted to was quite a like hard. oh okay this is harder so we had um at the time we had our pram we had a pram with us we had our pram top and we we'd put that down and, and settle him in there and I had my husband jokes about this even now from like him having to get right go get the parasols for the shade oh, yeah, and yeah. then the mosquito net because yeah. there were mosquitoes and I was paranoid yeah. first baby oh my god yeah, 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 what yeah. will happen um because of course they can't have any protection for that nope. um medically so I was like mosquito net blah, blah, blah. and then all of that up rigmarole and he's just like whoa what's going on you know he yeah. was he was a very alert <laughs> little one um but just to have that, because I, I mean, I think that was in your early days anyway. And well, I, I launched know. in March 2010. So in March, you know. yeah. So it was brand new. And if I'd have known then, uh, yeah. I would have used that on that holiday. And I can imagine the difference that would have made for yeah. my highly stimulated little boy. Yeah, um, yeah. But we're coming in as we as we release this episode, we're coming into, you know, it's light now in the UK. Yeah. People are starting to get ready for travel, summer holidays and so on. Especially after all the horrible weather we've had. It's been a I mean, long a winter. A holiday now because they're like, you know what, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been like the, the longest winter, I think, in history. It's, it's been the worst winter. It's been the eighth worst winter since records began. Has it? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I can believe it. It's yeah, felt, like, oh, yeah. it felt endless, even though we did go away and, um, at Christmas. That just feels like a minor little dot now. In, you know, yeah, I haven't been able to go away because Holly's in all preparation for GCSEs and everything, so she hasn't mm. wanted to do anything. So normally we go away quite a lot, like in February half term and yeah. what have you. And nope, nothing. Not so uh, we won't be going away in May half term because she's in the middle of a GCSE. So yeah, uh, it's, it's kind time. of um, stopped us because we, we've always been a big traveling family. So yeah. Um, yeah. one of the reasons why Snooze was so cri critical, really. Yeah, definitely. So lots of people, I imagine we'll have listeners that are raving fans of Snooze Shade already. I imagine we also have listeners that that are brand new to mm. parenting and that are going wow what is this invention and, yeah, and is it another, thing, another it. thing I don't need that's the thing well yeah that's <laughs> it there are so many things you don't need but I, I mean I can vouch for the fact now mine are 11 and 13 and I can say you do need this um you need every version of it especially <laughs> if you want to travel even you know even more so but even just going out for walks and to get you, you know, get out and about not feel like you're tied to the home 
Um, but it's, yeah. so important for, it's so important for mental health as well. I mean, I yeah. had postnatal depression after mm. I had Holly. And that was one of the reasons I also, as well as the, just being excited to walk again, it was also I wanted to get out and I wanted to meet people because, yeah. you know, it's so important to be able to do that. And then not, I mean, otherwise, and, and for example, I really wanted to do, there was a thing, oh, that's still around actually, Buggy Fit, which was an exercise yeah. class with buggies. And I couldn't do it because every time they did a class, it always clashed with her naps. Mm. And, I, and I thought, well, there's no point me joining up because I could do it one week, but then maybe next week I wouldn't want to miss her nap and all the rest of it. And like, had I had a snooze shade then, mm. I could have just cracked on and done the things I wanted to do. And yeah. she would have got what she needed and I would have got what I needed. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to understand that this isn't just about making it, it's combination. It's not just about making it dark. It's not, you know, so they can sleep. It's not just about making it. People often look at the fabric protection. and they think, oh, but it's letting light through. It's like, yeah, honestly, like it's, it's a very different experience as well when you're inside a pram covered mm. by something versus holding something up against, you know, yeah. the, the light. Yeah. Um, and it's, it is, it's very, very different. And uh, yeah. people sort of go, oh, but it lets a lot. And there's lots of little light spots. I'm like, yeah, there are tiny, tiny light spots, but in many ways, that's actually a good thing because, mm. you know, and, and it works even for babies who literally will not sleep without blackout. I mean, I've had so many parents who've gone, I can't believe it because I didn't think, because it has to have holes in it. Otherwise air can't move through it. Yeah. There's, you can't have, people go, is it blackout? I'm like, it can't be. Because no. if it was blackout, you wouldn't be able to get the air through it. But the mm. way it's, the other thing is because, and the reason mine are more expensive is because they're actually two layers of a very fine mesh. So whereas most products are just one thicker layer of mesh, which would be therefore less air permeable. But, mm. you know, and so there's, you know, I'm, I'm making double the product, if you see what I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but no, it is, it's really interesting. And, um, but like even babies who literally won't sleep with, you know, anywhere else, they, they will, like, some, some parents are often gobsmacked. They're like, I can't believe this. And I'm mm. like, you know, and I love it. That That's actually, I have to say, there have been many hard times on the journey, like in the last yeah. 14 years. And there have been many points where I've thought, you know what? Um, is it worth doing it and every day I'd get a message from a parent it would be like oh my god this has been a game changer a lifesaver this mm. is like you know that changed our world and I'm like that's why I'm doing this you know yeah yeah and that's what I mean it's the bigger picture isn't it of all the all the benefits it's so if you're somebody who's okay I want to be able to go out um and I want my little one to sleep, but yes, they need it dark. But actually, what if they don't, what if darkness isn't necessarily the thing? And you think, well, my child sleeps okay, even Stimula if it's dark. It can be stimulation. Stimulation. Even. Yeah. yeah. And you see, I also think, my, my honest opinion is that we, as a, I think as a generation, we take our children out far more than like, we we weren't taken out. I, I was born in the seventies and, um, you know, we weren't taken out as much. We weren't included. It was sort of, you know, children were seen and not heard quite a lot more. Mm. And I do think we take children out all the time and we're mm. ta taking them to stimulating places. We're taking them to you know, yeah. play centers and restaurants and play dates and this and that and the other yeah. and on school runs. And, you know, and actually sometimes they just need a break. They need that down time. And even if they're not necessarily sleeping, they just they feel they, snug they and they get that. There, just yeah. Often babies behind a snooze show, they're, sometimes they're not even asleep. They're just chilling. Chilling out. And that's yeah. so and good for them. Great. Yeah, definitely. So good to have those little bits of time. We talk about it with sleep with, you know, with parents when we're helping them transition with naps and things. We talk about, okay, look, they don't need a nap now, but they do need quiet time. Yeah. So we need at yeah. least to have factor in at least 30 minutes to an hour of that of that downtime. And we're talking sort of three plus at this point where they're well, you know, just about for a long time. I mean, yeah. and, they, and I think people forget that as well, because yeah. I mean, Holly, I, Holly, um, I used to, I used my snoo shade. I had the plus deluxe because obviously I did that one first and um I had that until Holly was five because mm -hmm. even just for like going on holiday going to an airport on a transfer like one time I remember we were on going on holiday to Cyprus mm -hmm. and we literally like there was delays and delays so um she was in the push and she was knackered and we've mm -hmm. been up like since one because we we're getting yeah. a flight at whatever stupid time in the morning so I just chucked the snooze shade on and then even in the evening even at five yeah. she was more than capable of walking but she'd get tired yeah. so then we'd push her like like to the restaurant in the push chair and then she'd sit and have something to eat and then she'd be tired and want to go to sleep and yeah it, it's kind of selfish to expect them to do what we're doing as adults so I just yeah. used to chuck the snooze well she used to like have the snooze shade on sometimes yeah. she would just zip it up herself yeah it's, yeah like, and I'm like okay darling are you, are you ready and then she'd yeah. zip it up and then I'd just put the outer panel on and she'd be happy as Larry and then we'd push her back like it could be 10 11 o'clock at night but she'd and be fast asleep 
when you think about it as well, and I'm just picturing when you say that, I'm just picturing, you know, a busy airport, like moving around, you've got lots of people, you're small, right? You're a small person, yeah, there's all these really, big people really everywhere, scary. lights, noises, announcements, yeah, stuff, stresses around you, all sorts. Have you ever had anyone, um, I'd be amazed if you haven't actually, had anyone who has a child who's perhaps autistic Special or needs. has ADHD yeah. Yeah. with sensory overload. Absolutely. And then I see, I can picture even sort of four or five year olds who would relish the opportunity to get into their no, safe space, I mean, you know, into their tent. And just the I'm actually developing one. I've actually got, so I've actually got a special needs pushchair in my lounge at the moment yeah. um, because obviously for slightly older children, it would need to be a bigger product. Yeah. Um, so I'm just struggling a little bit because sometimes the hoods on those are not as, as good. Um, and also obviously I want to make it sort of, you know, but yes, I've, I've actually got people literally kind of begging me to yeah. do it. And, and, yeah. and I have quite a few parents who just, especially when children are small enough to be in a buggy, yeah. um, they just zip the child up permanently because the child wants that security. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, I actually have ADHD myself and, me so, too. <laughs> does, my, and so does my daughter. Um, yeah. I was diagnosed last year when she was, because I was sitting in the appointment and uh, I was going, Oh, actually that's me. That's, that's me. me. Well. And actually, I was a lot worse than her at school and you know um and um you know so I and and it's really interesting because now I understand better about myself I always I always said I was sort of an introvert extrovert but actually I don't think I am I just get overstimulated so yeah for example if I go to a conference like you were saying about having downtime like 30 minutes downtime if I go to a conference now I actually go back to my room for like usually an hour or so just to and literally just sit and either watch a tv program or do something that just switches my brain off because Otherwise I get overstimulated and then I go like a bit hyper and, you know. I can't say I'm surprised you said that. So I got diagnosed just after I turned 41 and um, similar situation. I was like, you know, when you go, wait a second and all, everything suddenly makes sense. You're like, ah, oh, that makes sense. But I also like, realise how many of my friends have got ADHD as well. That's a scary well, you, thing as well. You know, you're like me and you're surrounded by lots of innovative, visionary female entrepreneurs. Okay, we'll edit that. It seemed to. Have yeah, been I was going to say little... that one. That, uh, that literally, when you said, "Don't worry if it glitches out," I was like, "That just cut out completely." That doesn't normally do that. That's fine. We'll edit that. It seems to have started a new recording, but don't panic. We can edit that. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, slice them together. It is recording, so I'll just carry on. Yeah, um, I think we are surrounded by lots of female entrepreneurial visionaries yeah. um ideas people like you and i yes. as well who see a problem we see a yep. solution ADHD, actually problem it's solving a is a very big adhd trait as well yeah so. yeah but it's also a superpower and as long as we can control our yeah. um focus and yes. and have that downtime you know there are so many assets to, to no, that as well. so i'm not surprised that you're you're in the gang <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and it's so funny. Like all, my, like all my best friends, pretty much. We're all. I'm like, yeah. You, if you haven't been diagnosed, you should be. <laughs> yeah, you can tell now, can't you? I speak to people. People actually approach me and say, "I'm wondering if I have this. How did you find?" And they quiz me, and I sit there going, "Yeah, you blatantly do." <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, it's so funny. And I mean, actually, it was really also funny because most of my friends, when I said, I was like, "Oh my god, I've got ADHD," and they were like, "Uh." really you're surprised <laughs> yeah because <laughs> when people know when you know and you understand it properly I think obviously back when we were kids it was probably more labeled as you know the hyperactive Naughty. boy in school well, and that's the it problem that's the problem with a lot of the ADHD girls. world it was yeah. all about and actually the only testing and everything was on boys it was, it was never yeah. girls and that never was one of the reasons it took so long for my daughter to be diagnosed because now I realize she's been showing us for many years mm. but, uh, but girls are brilliant at masking it and, at masking um, and that's and, the problem and sometimes they're being hyper focused rather than yeah, well, you know mental, climbing the walls versus mm. physical and yeah. I would I would definitely say I know I I've got uh, that's where I've fallen down a mm. few times is on mm over over focusing on something mm, I but see thank it. god I focused on snooze that's all well, I'll say exactly and the, and the thing is is though it, 
people like us will start something that other yeah. people will never well, actually start yeah and also we have that determination to see it through you know yeah. you, you're still seeing the next level with look, look at how snooze shows has evolved look at the, oh, i mean you know like when i started i just had the one product and then mm. It's always, and also I've always listened to parents, like parents have always told me what they want. And I, I was like, so every single pair, every single product has come from somebody saying, and they have to say it multiple times as well, you know, oh, I could really do with one like this, one like this, one like this, one like this. And um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think if you listen to people as well, um, then, you know, you get, that's where you can get more ideas from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. I just love talking to you. I know I could talk to you all a day long <laughs> because we would just move on to the next topic. And the exactly. next topic. But, um, I'm, I'm so grateful for you coming onto the show and sharing with us, you know, the, your journey and story, because I think not only is it inspiring for, we have lots of mums that listen and you know, lots of mums will be sitting there and they'll have ideas and they'll be spotting other challenges they're having yeah. in this new modern tech world we live in. And that, you know, it's really, inspiring to hear from a mum who is an inventor who has made this happen that's also impacted so many lives um and and there'll be parents who are also going i'm gonna get my hands on this <laughs> tomorrow like it's um it is just really great to talk this through with you, Karen. I, I know from a massive sleep advocate that I am and at the Sleep Nanny, we couldn't rave enough about your product oh, and how it supports you. families to get that. I just love sleep. help. I really genuinely love helping people. It's really funny. I was I was talking to somebody about the business the other day and they were like, you know, uh, what are your plans for financial growth, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I never, ever think about how I grow the business financially. Mm. I just think, how do I reach more parents? Yeah. Because, you know, I honestly, it's, I just, I just love, I love, you know i love it it's just yeah. like and i love the fact that I, I i'm helping i know i'm helping and you know that for me is why i you know even when days get hard there's a problem and you know some issue comes up and you've got to you're tearing your hair out i'm just like nope carry on <laughs> yeah and that's the, yeah that's because you're in touch with the objective that is the objective the financial growth comes as a byproduct of that right it, yeah, exactly. um but the objective is to make the difference yeah. to to help people and to make you know to to make an impact with what you've created yeah i i I really respect that. And I think that's where we need more people like us in the world. And, you know, when, when things become too business heavy, you oh, lose yeah. sight of the actual well, objective. It's like, it's like you're, I mean, I always say to people, you know, get in touch with us. If you have a problem, get in touch. Because, you know, my team is a team of it's four mums, yeah. um, all part time, all working around yeah. children and whatever. And, yeah. um, you know, but the thing is, is that I think people think sometimes, I think people think we're a bigger business than, or it's a bigger business than it is. Mm. And, you know, it's me, usually me at the weekends. Like if I, I've got my phone, I've got Instagram messages, Facebook messages yeah. popping up. And if I see someone who needs help, I'm like, like, right, okay, and if I can help immediately, I will. Otherwise, I'm like, look, someone will come and help you on Monday because there's yeah. nothing worse than sending a message in and then it just going into like some kind of tumbleweed set sort of system or whatever. Yeah, and um, you know, customer service is uh, it's a dying art, yeah. it's a dying art, and I'm super I hate getting bad customer service mm. and um I would hate to give bad customer service mm. um but I just think that you know uh, you know that's we're pe we we remember what it's like to be a parent of a child that's not sleeping or whatever mm. it is and there's I would say there's no such thing as a silly question like you yeah. could literally ask what you think is the most stupid question I don't care I've heard it all in yeah. 14 years I don't think there's a question I haven't heard and some of them can be really like, well, isn't it going to kill the baby? Or how does the baby breathe and things like that? And if I'm honest, every now and then I have got a very naughty sense of humor. And I do feel like being a bit snarky and kind of going, well, how do you think the baby breathes? Goes in and out. You know, don't yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> but I also go, no, this is a genuine state. Like, and, I, and then I'm like, well, actually what happens is, you know, that the air fabric is air permeable and therefore it has no impact on air or O2 yeah. or CO2 or anything. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, but it, it's, uh, no, I love it. I mean, you know, that's, it actually, that is literally what gets me up in the morning. I Other than my daughter. My daughter is what I live for. And yeah, then Snoo Shade is what I get up for the rest of the time. I love that. And you are so approachable and you know, warm in what you do. And I love that people can approach you with their crazy questions, even oh, if they're... Crazy. I love crazy. <laughs> crazy is really fun. Definitely. Definitely. No, it's amazing what you've done, Cara. Um, oh, thank hats you. off to you. Thank you so much for and joining you. us today. I got, see, and you. Like, it's a bit of big love back again. Ah. <laughs> what you've done. I mean, I've been, I've been like, I've known you since you started pretty much. Yeah. And you know, seeing how you've evolved is just incredible. I mean, it really is. It's just, yeah. you know, go, go, go girls. Yeah, right. Definitely. Definitely. Onward and upward and 
Yeah, well, it's there's always new babies being born. There are always yeah. new parents coming along who are like, oh my God, how do I do this? How do I do that? Yeah. And I sometimes have to remind well, myself families of that. are different. Families, there's yeah. not the same infrastructures as there used to be. And like, no, it's always you know, like where is, where is the village? You know, mm-hmm. like, well, you're lucky if you get one or two people, let alone a village nowadays. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we have to go where we can get some kind of support. Yeah, exactly. And yeah and then there's always uh, it's our message and our and what we do you know sometimes I think oh yeah we've said this before and it's like yeah but it doesn't matter to this audience they've all got their kids have all grown up now and now we have you know there's always new people coming along um there's so much more noise with social media and technology there's so much noise and clutter for parents to sift through that I think they have it tougher than ever I do actually Um, because it's it was easier in my day because we didn't have like I mean uh, Holly was born in 2007 so yeah. Twitter didn't even start till 2009 yeah. um, and, um, and even Facebook I mean I've hardly got any pictures of I've got a few pictures of her as a baby on Facebook but very very yeah. few because I didn't even have a smartphone I had like one of those little flip phones and, yeah. you know and I you had a, like a, a Sony camera that I used yeah. to take photos of her on you yeah know? an actual I camera I got my first <laughs> iPhone was I don't know when that was about 20 that might have been about 2010 actually and yeah, um, it was around then you know, I think yeah. And it's and it's 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 amazing. Like and then you think about all the social media and stuff like that. So there was Mums Net and Net Mums. Yeah. And that was sort of it. That was it. You know. I used to write for them. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. well, so I remember <laughs> so I remember somebody actually stole my idea before I even launched it because I put something up on uh it was Net Mums and I put up I've got this idea and blah 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 and all the rest of it. And one of the names I had for Snoo Shade before Snoo Shade was Buggy Blind. Um, and, um, and, but I decided not to call it that because blind in some countries is just blind, no sight, not blind curtains, etc. Yeah. And, um, and also I like, I don't know, I went with Snoo Shade and I love it because it does what it. it says on the tin, you know, and actually and it it's, it's not necessarily a buggy product either, yeah. but, um, somebody actually copied the idea and started selling their version and they, and I'd registered buggyblind.co.uk and they registered buggy-blind.co.uk. Um, and they 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 were doing that just literally as I went to the BPA I was like thinking oh my god what's the point why am I doing this you know someone's copying me already but anyway they disappeared (laughs) well that's just it that's just it and I've seen I've seen that and not just in in my business but in all kinds of businesses you know I see the you'll always get the people who think they can or who yeah. want to and maybe their intentions are great but what, and sometimes they're they're not they're and not. they could be shady I mean, the one thing, but they the don't one, last if the one issue not. I do have is at the moment is that obviously with all the um a lot of like fake products and copy products that are selling on things like Shein and Timu and even mm. Amazon you know I mean one of the I'm actually starting a campaign um which is going to be called look for the label because mm. there's a very very easy way to tell whether a product has even been through forget safety testing has been through any kind of anything mm. because if it doesn't even have a washing label on it mm-hmm. right and there's no mention of a manufacturer then it mm-hmm. hasn't been to a laboratory to be tested. And unfortunately, you know, retailers like Amazon do not mm-hmm. ask for safety certification unless there's a particular standard. And mm-hmm. things like she I mean, you're buying literally from the factories. Yeah. Like, and they don't care. They're not going to give you any customer. And, they, and they're just all about doing it for as cheap as physically possible. That's why it's so cheap. That's why if you've got returns, they don't, they say don't bother. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's no point. <laughs> exactly. And they're, they're selling, they're making them so cheap. It doesn't matter. They can get rid of probably 10 and that would be the same price as having made one. Yeah, definitely. No, it's crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely crazy, but there's no substitute for quality and no, there'll exactly. always be people who value yeah, 100%. quality. percent. And I'm, I'm a big believer in that as well. There's always people who will, you know, regardless, I mean, obviously people say to me, oh, your products are expensive. And I'm like, I mean, look, my cheapest product is 20 pounds and that's been 20 pounds since I launched in 2010 I mean wow. um, I had to put the price up people. last year <laughs> 21 pounds um but I then brought it managed to renegotiate with my manufacturer and I managed to get it back down again even though I don't make as much money it's still I like having a 20 pound product yeah and you know when I th- you think as well that these that will last multiple children yeah um and also you know you they you know you can use that there's you only need like maybe two or three products and when you think about other things that you buy that you use for a few months and then it's and then that's it you'll never shoes and but you'd pay 20 pounds for one good nap wouldn't you sorry (laughs) you'd pay 20 pounds for one good nap paid more than that (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly so it's just it's a drop in the ocean (laughs) I know I know I know but I also understand that everyone has the money and so I mean for example I always recommend people go and have a look on Vinted because there's quite a lot of quite strong secondhand market of snooze shades on Vinted um and facebook marketplace and places like that but just make sure it is a snooze shade as well because people call them a snooze shade sometimes and it's not it's It's like a 
an alternative product. So unless it says snoo shade, it is not a snoo shade. That's mm-hmm. what I always say. Yeah. Well, good for you though for you know advocating the oh, no. and recycling. I the... started a pre-loved scheme as well, which yeah. um, where basically people can trade in their original, which is the baby product, and then I give them a big twenty percent discount on the six month one, and then we uh, we wash them and re- repurpose them, and then I sell them at pretty much cost back yeah. again. Um, in fact, I've just done just done two loads of washing yesterday, um, which was to get them um, packed up and ready. Because um, and I just I just sort of think it's it, you know it just gives people who and also some people, if I'm honest, they, it's not the money, it's the sustainability and it's the yeah. you yeah. know it's the fact that and I love the fact you know it, it almost upsets me that there are snoo shades sitting in attics and lofts and not being out there being used yeah. because you know it's a waste because the the like the uv protection doesn't wear off you know mm-hmm. and neither yeah. does the sleep the sleep will always work but people sort of say oh well will it still work for the sun it's the fabric that makes the sun protection yeah. not and the color yeah uh, so it's not chemically treated or anything so i'm like yes you know yeah use it you know it doesn't expire <laughs> it doesn't expire exactly i mean I, i've seen them on on vintage and stuff and they are clearly from at least 12 years ago, because I can recognize from the logo and they're still going. I'm like, oh, bloody that's, hell. That's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. You've got a legacy here. and it's I love brilliant. it. I do love that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just oh, it's so inspiring. Love it, Cara. Absolutely love it. And love talking to you. We're going to put the links in the show notes so that people can um, have a look at everything that you have to offer um if people everything you have to offer (laughs) all your stuff no but we will especially like I say the time of year the season we're going into people will be thinking about holidays people are going to listen to this and say well I need to get my hands on one of those it's got to be in my suitcase and not just that naps everything um so we will put the link to snoo shade in there if people want to reach out to you and people are like i really want to ask her a question she's such an interesting lady where would you like people <laughs> well, to is actually snoo, um, snoo shade instagram is probably the best because i mean yeah. as i said i can look i mean this is my phone and yep. messages come up on my phone and um and my team if i'm not around my team will flag it and say oh carl there's one for you sort of thing but yeah. um you might well get me anyway because as i yeah. said i'm i'm the sort of 24 7 yeah sort of um checker <laughs> i'm the same with mine it's a dual thing you might get me you might get you might yeah. get my marketing person you just yeah but it's a team it's a team thing we have a core four as well where we're all mums and we're all we're yeah. all doing all doing the thing so yeah exactly. um so instagram i like that anyway to be honest emails just oh i like too emails, formal. Email. <laughs> yeah, emails too formal for me i'm like i'm much more like and also the good thing is on instagram if it's going to take too long to answer i can just do a voice note Exactly. I love that. Well, that's how we're here today. Um, oh, yeah, because I, I messaged Cara and I said, hey, Cara, are you free? Do you want to jump onto a podcast with me? And she was like, absolutely, let's do it. So there we go, <laughs> making the magic happen. Exactly. <laughs> well, once again, thank you so much for giving up your time coming and talking to us oh, today. Pleasure. And I can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Who knows? <laughs> Talk to you soon. Thank you.